Welcome to part two of Bridal Awareness, where I'm going to be talking about handheld. Anytime your bridle and pilot chute are out of your rig prior to you jumping, there are a lot of things to be mindful of. On PCAs and static lines, everything stays behind you as you exit. So as long as you've ensured that everything is clear as you're actually exiting, you can just focus on the jump. On a handheld jump, your bridle and pilot chute are coming with you in free fall. So understanding how everything is set up is absolutely crucial, as well as being aware of how your movements while in free fall are going to influence everything. When I talk about setting up a handheld, I'm going to assume that you have your rig configured in the traditional way, meaning that the bridle is coming from inside the rig to the top pin first, then the bottom pin, and then it runs along the channel through the bottom corner, and your pilot chute is stowed in the BOC. The golden rule, once again, is never gear up with your pilot chute outside of your BOC. Before I put the rig on, I'm going to go through a full gear check and make sure that everything is routed correctly. I covered this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go through it again here. What I'm going to do here is start the setup process just so you can get a good visual from the back, and then I'll actually put the rig on myself and go into a little bit more detail. When I have the rig on, I like to bring my left hand around the back and put some pressure on the bottom pin so I don't accidentally pop it as I start to do everything. And then take my pilot chute out. If it's windy, again, same as with a PCA, I'll put it between my knees. If there's nothing on the ground that I'm worried about potentially damaging the pilot chute, I'll just throw it on the ground. The next thing that we're gonna do is remove the bridle from the channel in this bottom corner. The reason for that is that if I don't, there's a chance that the bridle could get hooked on this corner as I put pressure on it. And if it does, if that does happen in free fall, it'll still most likely release, but it will create a snag and cause a hesitation. And we just want to avoid that if possible. So following removing the bridle from the channel, I'm going to bring it up and put everything in front of my shoulder and then give the bridle a tuck back here on the shoulder. People will give the tucks in different places. Some like to do it underneath on the outside, some underneath on the inside. It all essentially accomplishes the same thing. There are some rigs that will come with a magnetic bridle. Um, I know that Squirrel make it standard on the Crux 2 now and Apex has it as an option and other manufacturers might do the same. As long as we have some way of keeping the bridle away from that bottom corner and have it set somewhere up on your shoulder, it really doesn't matter which one of these methods that you use. To go through that again, I'm first going to reach back and put some pressure on my bottom pin, take the bridle chew down, clear the bridle from that bottom corner, and then bring it up and over my shoulder. Once it's over my shoulder, I'll reach back and give a tuck. And then come around the front. When I give that tuck, I want it in to be in pretty deep, but not so deep that it's actually gonna hook around one of the flaps and potentially get snagged on something. From here, everybody that begins the setup process for handheld is pretty consistent in how they teach it. It's a good idea to grab the bridle in between your thumb and index finger, and then run your arm out straight. Once I've done that, I'll make a fist, and then pull a little bit of slack up into my fist. Basically, I want the bridle to be just about the length of my arm and when I bend my elbow I don't want there to be so much slack in it that it's going to actually come down and potentially be able to get hooked on my elbow. So I'll run it out straight, make a fist and then just pull a little bit of slack. Again, extend the arm and I can kind of move it around just to make sure that it's not going to accidentally fall out. If I have this too tight there is a danger that when I'm just extending that the tuck on my shoulder will accidentally get pulled out. All right, man, have fun. I did, yeah, that was down. Whoa, 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 shit. What? When I did that, my tuck fell out. Yeah, you had a tight tuck. So I'll give my tuck again, run the hand out straight, make a fist, pull a little bit of slack up into my fist again, and then I can flex and extend my arm, and that way I can have freedom to climb over stuff and move around the exit point without accidentally pulling that tuck out. Once I'm here, I'm gonna S-fold all of the bridle into my fist with all the loops coming out the top. Some people will do lots of little loops here. Some people will just do a couple of big ones. It's all accomplishing the same thing. Once you get to the pilot chute, 
I'll grab the mesh and run my hand down straight just to extend the center line. And then I'll continue to S fold all of the mesh into my hand. Once I get here, there are two most common methods for handheld. The first is you leave the, all the ZP exposed at the top. People call this mushroom or chef's hat or whatever. And the second method is going to be collapsing all of the ZP into your hand. Just because it's a little bit easier to show, I'll talk about this one first, but seeing as what's happening to the bridle um, is different, depending which method that you use, I will talk about and weigh each one a little bit, but I'm not gonna go too deep into the weeds on it in this particular video. So once I have everything set up here, everything is staged in my hand, bridle, mesh, ZP, and we have the bridle running clear back to the top. At this point, you are essentially ready, ready to jump, assuming that everything is done correctly. It's a really good idea to get a gear check from a buddy when you are here, chest strap, leg straps, do a pin check, make sure you have a good tuck and that everything is routed correctly. Now it's time to actually get on to the exit point. This could be as simple as just walking forward to the edge or as awkward as having to climb over a rail and be mindful of where the bridle is. You're, this hand is full of something so it's super awkward to grab on and it becomes very complicated. And this can be very stressful for people, especially students in the beginning when they're first learning. For that reason, I think that there's really no excuse for being uncomfortable or not super competent with getting to this point. You can practice all of this stuff at home. We all know everybody's putting their rig on and walking around looking in the mirror anyways. So putting your rig on, practicing this entire setup is gonna make it a lot less stressful when you actually get to the exit point. A concept or more of a mantra that I've been trying to instill in people a little bit more recently is saying no wasted movements. So when we're actually in free fall, everything that we do should be deliberate and have a, a purpose behind doing it. And equally, we should only be giving the minimum amount of effort to get the desired result that we want. So in terms of our setup process, right before we exit, I like to place my hand in the position it's going to initially be in free fall. And if we're at the bridge here, you can have one hand at the back. So hand is out here, and then when you exit, your other hand just comes up to meet it in its opposite position. When your arms are back here, and the bridle might be getting tight, and as you exit, you're gonna swing your arms forward, and that's gonna give the opportunity for the bridle to also swing forward. The same is true if you're going to be doing a running exit. I think it's a good idea to hold your hand up and back in that position, and as you run, just keep it up. Instead of swinging your arm back and forth like this, allowing the bridle to move around and potentially interact with something. I know that this is awkward, but again, it's another one of those things that you can put your rig on and just practice running back and forth with your hand up in the air. It is one of those things that will get easier and you will get more comfortable doing it the more that you practice it. So by having it back here, it's in a good position, and then we exit. When we're actually in free fall, the only thing that we essentially have to think about is our elbow flexing and extending. When we throw the pilot chute, there's a couple of things that we're trying to accomplish. We want the bridle and pilot chute to get away from our bodies into clean air, and we want to ideally get everything to the end of the bridle so that the pilot chute can inflate and then center over your back and start doing what it's supposed to do. One thing that I see people doing quite a lot is after they exit, they'll do a big wind up and, all, and put their shoulders off access as they're throwing and do kind of a, a big aggressive baseball throw. While it may ne not necessarily cause any problems, it's just unnecessary. Pilot chutes are very, very light. In order to actually get it to, to throw at nine feet, which is the typical length of a bridle, it really doesn't take that much effort. Everything can be accomplished with just a nice snappy motion from your elbow and that's essentially all that you have to do. Another thing that I recommend people do is to throw with the opposite arm. So when you, if you're exiting, bring this out, bring both hands in at the same time and throw them both out at the same time. This is matching the movement that you're doing on the hand that's actually throwing so it's keeping everything symmetrical and it also helps 
to keep your shoulders level and minimizes the chance of you just rotating to one side and going off axis. Nice. In terms of the direction that you throw or the angle that you release the pilot you at, majority of people will say throwing out to the side is sweet. I also see people throwing straight up above your head. I think that you probably could argue that throwing it straight up above your head might start the extraction earlier because the pilot chute doesn't have to hit the end and then center over your back. But that's one of those things that you'll hear people arguing about and I don't know if it actually makes that much difference or not. What's typically not a good idea with the throw is to bring your hand in front of your face and throw it up in a fashion like this. Again, all that's, this is allowing is the potential for the bridle to come in front of your body and as you throw you could hit your helmet get the bridle. i've seen the bridle like get stuck in somebody's helmet just under the lip here interact with the chin strap and all that sort of stuff the same goes with if you have a camera on your head there's a, a pretty consistent agreement between everybody in jumping that it's a bad idea to wear a camera on your head if you're going handheld with a tailwind because as you throw everything is going to get blown forward in front of your body and it has the potential to interact with that camera. It's also a good idea to not have any watches or jewelry or anything on the side of your wrist or hand that could potentially get snagged in the pilot shoot. So moving back to the other method where we leave the ZP exposed. Well, first off, to finish that, I really like this method specifically if I'm going to be taking a delay. So if I'm gonna be taking over one second, basically I like to have everything nice and collapsed and in my hand. And if I'm doing a go and throw, I'll typically set it up like this where I'm leaving the ZP exposed. I really like this method because as soon as you exit, air can access the mesh and actually start to inflate the pilot chute right away. So it's not uncommon for you to actually see the pilot chute will actually start to tow as soon as you leave the exit point, which is good. The reason I don't like that for a delay is because as this is towing, it's going to create a little bit of drag and could potentially pull you off access. I see lots of people doing it without issue. Again, it's one of those things I'm not 100% convinced if it makes too much of a difference or not. But the other thing is that when I go to throw the pilot chute like this and there's already air accessing it, what you'll usually see happen is as you let go of it, all the bridle and pilot chute just essentially uh, separates from itself and then the pilot chute gets pulled straight up over your head. When you are taking a delay, it's very difficult to actually throw it away from your body. And that's kind of my only concern with that one. One pet peeve of mine that I see people doing quite frequently is when they're going handheld with the ZP exposed, they'll actually set the ZP over their hand like this. Now, when I exit, there is a chance that the ZP can just blow around my fist and I kind of have to shake it around or flick it back out of the way. So again, it's just adding an extra piece of movement that I have to do, which is unnecessary. We'll also see if people are on taking a poised exit, they'll actually swing, swing their hands up like this as they're exiting. So number one, you have the potential for the bridle to come around in front of your arm. And number two, you have to flip this back up out of the way. So I like to just set it in a position that it's already going to be in or that it has to get to. And if I'm, even if I'm running, I'll run. And then this is already in position. I don't have to do anything except flex and extend my arm like I talked about before. In order to reduce the chances of having a bridle wrap, just follow the three recommendations that I've been talking about throughout this video. Number one, make sure that you don't have too much slack in the bridle. Number two, avoid as much unnecessary movement as possible when you're actually on the jump. And number three, when you throw the pilot chute, give it a good snappy motion in order to get everything away from your body. If you do happen to have a bridle wrap on your arm on a handheld jump or on a stow jump for that matter, it's a good idea to just throw your arm straight up in the air. Most of the time it will clear by itself, but equally if it doesn't, you can kind of see which direction you have to move your arm in order to clear it. Throwing your arm straight out to the side can cause problems because you essentially just have a 50-50 shot of making it better or making it worse. All right, that is it for part two of Bridal Awareness. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate the positive feedback that I've been getting from these videos. And I encourage everybody to jump in the comments, ask questions, make critiques, 
and maybe add some points that I may have left out. Even though these videos are quite long, when I actually teach this stuff to students, we usually spend double the amount of time going over everything. So it's very difficult for me to be able to condense everything into something that's digestible for everyone. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about going stone. So I'll see you again. Thanks for watching.